Welcome back to the Everyday Innovation Podcast. Joining us this episode is Amin Hamu, personal brand strategist and a connector, conductor of creators and creative misfits in his community, Brand Orchestrate. He recently pivoted from traditional branding to personal branding, and he's been helping impactful designers, solopreneurs, and storytellers make their mark. I've worked with Amin many times on Twitter spaces. We've collaborated before on a double feature, which I will link in our show notes. Um, but I'm so glad to have him here. He's a great friend, a great creator, and a great mentor for many, many people um, out in the creator community. So welcome. And I'm going to get started with some fun questions. Does that work for you? Definitely. Thank you so much, Jordan, for, for the invite. I'm very excited to be here. Of course, it's always a fun conversation with you. Um, so I wanted to ask you, what are you learning about right now? What are you reading as creators, early stage founders? We're always kind of researching and learning new things. I want to know what you're into right now. Right. So I'm into, as you mentioned in the intro, everything that has the word personal in, in, into it. So personal brand, personal finance, and personal um, training. So body, mind, and spirits. Everything you're kind of hitting all of the area, the, all the life design areas, right? You're like hitting all of them so that you're optimized in all of those spaces because they do kind of feed each other, right? They're always right. And there's that one famous quote. I don't know if I can say it correctly, but it's like one for the body, one for the mind, and one for mm. the soul. I love that. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I feel like it's also a really great point of conversation with you and your community too to say like what you're doing for your your personal self, your personal brand um, in all spaces of life. Yeah. Well, that's the topic of today. <laughs> well, there you go. And I've got some cards here. This is um, These were given to me by another guest on the show, and I've kind of pre-selected them. And then we have a little spontaneous choosing of one so you can answer. Um, but the one that has been chosen for today is perfect for this podcast, which is Describe your authentic self. Who is Amin? That's one hell of a question. Who it is doesn't even have to be on how, what is like, what is that internal core of Amin? Who right. is that? Well, I like to see myself as a fun, happy child who's very introverted, who tries to live the life that he wants, escape from the life that he has, and mm. pursue the life that he needs. So that's how I like to see myself from outside in. Um, now, or maybe from the inside out, as far as the outside, I like to be identified as a professional misfit, um, a person who doesn't feel t fit in one place, in one culture. So that's technically why I am, or why I have built, built a community just so that I can feel like I have some people who understand this, who doesn't, who like a community for people who do not fit in. It's weird mm. because how can you make a community if everyone in the community doesn't like to fit in in a community? And that's, that's kind of the purpose. That's kind of the radical differentiation. Um, and I'm trying this fun challenge. Um, I literally had this idea this morning. You will have to receive a DM from me soon, Jordan. Yes. But it's like I, I always love the idea of being a world citizen, like a person ah, who is yes. not a citizen of his own country, but citizen of multiple countries, uh, yeah. who's diverse in their culture. Um, and it is hard for most people to be that or to do that. Why? Because of the resources, lack of financial resources, right. la or added of like country restrictions. Not all of us are born with features and benefits and, and leverages. So I had this creative idea. How can I be a world citizen right in the comfort of my home? And mm. the answer to that was this. What if I can get every single person that I know who is or not part of my community, who is a person that I maybe connect with them on LinkedIn, Instagram, whatever in my whole entrepreneurial journey, and ask them to do those kind of funny, silly things where people like take their phones and like, take a screenshot or take a photo of you, your Instagram, your Instagram account in like a, yeah. in like a, a crazy place. Like, for example, if you're in, in London, like in, in face of those red uh, phone calls, like the red telephonic stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The telephone booth. Yes, yes. Very classic. Cool. So they take that, they take the screenshot of the Instagram person and they send it. So my goal as a word citizen is if I can get every person from a hundred different countries to do just that for my account. 
And then it's almost like I've traveled the world without having to travel the world. I love that. Well, this actually leads in really well to like our entire conversation, multiple parts of it anyway, that I would love to get to. But I want to talk about just the community first. You've been building this wonderful community, Brand Orchestrate, and you've also just built community out into your world and your social media. And I want to know what was the, um, I know we talked about this, so I'm not going to try and overlap too much so people can kind of take a little bit from each, but I want to know kind of really more from the personal angle, what was your motivation in doing that? In, in creating this, wanting to create this community around you? Was it being somewhere else? Was it just professional development? What was going through your mind when you were starting this? Right. Well, great question. Thank you. Um, I have a story on this. So for those who, who are hearing this, I studied software engineering in university, um, which is me being a nerd. Maybe most people would not even understand what a nerd is, but it's someone who like, freaks out and freaks out on like tech innovation, stuff like that. So yep. you're the new relate. I think you're speaking to very much the right crowd. We have a lot of intersection of probably people who have been in that background or are in that background currently mixed with the creative. So you're not speaking too far away from uh, from people listening. <laughs> well, I'm glad that I'm part of you people. Okay, Misfit so, nerds. Misfit, misfit nerds. nerds. That's a good <laughs> name. So I was like, uh, let's study this and let's see where that goes. So I did software engineering for like two or three years. And eventually I dropped out from university, but that's another story. So what happened during me studying in those three years, I was actually sharing and teaching and making content around software engineering. I was mm -hmm. building some form of a community um, in a very subconscious way. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know why I was doing it. I just know that it felt right at the time. And I knew that I liked helping people. I liked teaching. I liked taking the information that they have and helping someone else out there with it. So nice. that was a big success. Like I grow like a massive following at that time on Facebook, which is like 10,000 followers or more. It could be massive yeah. for some, it could be tiny for others. But for me, it was massive. I didn't even know how to do that and it just happened to work out. Um, so that was like my first ever experiment building a community online. Now, the story that I never shared pretty much ever, which is, a, this is the first time me sharing this, which is, yeah. <laughs> I think I got this community thing from my mom. Wow. Here's what I mean. I, I talk a lot about my mom, and that is that she is my driver on why I do what I do and like why I keep hustling and working hard because I want her to um, live a better life at least the rest of the years that she has. But what I didn't share is that when I was a kid, when I was going outside and playing with other kids, my mom was being the community conductor. She was gathering yeah. all the kids in the neighborhood. She bought the football ball. So this is such an Algerian thing, but like people in my country in Algeria like play football a lot. Like it's a very yeah. traditional thing on the streets everywhere. Um, so she was gathering the people, the kids, their parents talk to them. Hey, let's, let's get the kids to play football together. Um, and then she bought a ball for me and I was like, okay, I'm the official manager here. If yep. anyone wants yep. to play football, you have to come through me. You have to ask me about the time, the ball and stuff like that. So yeah. that was in a way my first ever subconscious experience built in a community with my palm. Um, um, and the second one was obviously the, the software engineering. Um, eventually, <laughs> both of those didn't work out. Why? I'm not a football person. Uh, not because of the game, but because the culture here of football is kind of weird. Like people curse a lot, people like hurt each other. Mm -hmm. So they don't play in a very respectful and safe space. And as an right. introvert, I don't like people already. Uh, plus, <laughs> like it's being yeah. risky. No, that's not for me. So I, I found better sport. So like I'm a bike hiker. I have like a basketball in the corner as well. So those sports seems like works best for me. Anyways. I did build a community for software people. Um, and at some point I was like, oh my God, this is good. It's growing, but I no longer want to do software engineering. I right. don't like sitting on a computer coding for forever, just talking yep. to a computer, no human interactions. This is not for me. So what happened is I dropped out from university and I dropped out from that community at the same time. I'm like, I'm sorry, even though you guys are supportive and you are here and you want to learn more, this is not what I want to teach. 
This is not right. what I want to do. So right. I felt bad about it. I felt disconnected. Like I felt like there was something missing. Because again, this is really subconscious here. I'm not like, I'm not like knowing exactly what I'm doing. I'm just doing it. Right. Um, and at some point I'm like, okay, uh, job out from university. I have to find a career. I have to make money. I have to do something with my life. So I started learning about design. I started following the typical designer path. So learning design, learning brand design, and trying to sell that as a freelancer. Um, right. And guess what happened? I started building another community for that specific topic. And there is no way out. Absolutely no way out. Um, I know that e even if I change career again, as many as I want to do it, I will still figure mm -hmm. out a way to build the community and teach that. So. I like to think of this concept um, called the Ikigai, which is a Japanese concept for the reason of being. Mm -hmm. um, people like Chris Doe and others have utilized this concept in a very business way to help you find your passion, help you find what you're interested in, what, uh, and how can you connect all those dots together to make a living doing what you love. So that's his premise. I learned that from him, um, and I went on a rabbit hole, and the Ikigai for me was something that sits on the intersection of community, teaching or education, mm -hmm. and um, personal branding. Now, right. why personal branding? What's the story to that? Eventually, what I was doing is I was teaching with my personal brand. I'm like, this is me, I mean, and I'm telling you what I learned. This is me, I mean, sharing my journey with you. So I was right. also building a personal brand while I'm building a community. Um, right. A lot of personal brands, I would, like, you cannot not have a community when you're a person building a personal brand. Right. It's like it's almost a given. Now, the way you take care of that community, the way you give back to it, the way you support it is different. Some people acknowledge and do that in a very nice way. And some people off camera, they are horrible to their community. And they're like, ah, we don't like you. And you see that in a lot of celebrity-ish. Um, right. So... Anyways, I, my ikigai for that is like community, personal branding, and education. And I've been, I'm, I've been doing that since, um, since I decided on doing things on my own. But hopefully that's relatable in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, absolutely. And so what do you feel is, in general, I know you've already spoken on, really you're building, there, you can't help but build a com community when you're building your personal brand, especially if you're building it in public. So building it um, outwardly, sharing it with you know, with other people, you're not just doing self-development work in your own personal hole. So what is that intersection that you've seen for people who are trying to both build their community, both build their personal brand? How can they continue to evolve these two things so that they're continually, you know, they're able to evolve and they're able to evolve kind of who's coming into their space? Right. Well, it's a journey. It's a journey. It's like, it's not something that you can simply predict. Oh, I'm going to do that. And then who knows? It's a journey of exploration. Um, your job or your challenge here is to explore your abilities as further as you possibly can. Um, building a community subconsciously is one thing, like just mm -hmm. teaching, just giving value out there, and hopefully someone will collect the dots. Building a community consciously and intentionally is a whole other game. Mm -hmm. Because now you have to also learn that if you want to build a community properly, you also have to do things that you don't necessarily like to do or right. things that might not necessarily, they might sound boring to you or I might say not fun work. That's okay if, you're, if you have a strong vision towards where mm -hmm. you're going. And that's maybe where the branding aspects of all of this comes into place because fundamentally branding is about building a vision for where you're going or at least personal branding. Right. Um, so... A good question for the listeners is that, where do you want to go? Mm, Who do you want yeah. to see and attract 10 years from now? Who do you want to become 10 years from now, 20 years from now? And what are the necessary steps for you to get there? You can just simply ask that question and you can start creating like a roadmap for yourself. And just having one thing in your action list is better than nothing. Just having some form of a vision is better than none. Just some form of guidance is better than misguidance altogether. So that's, that's that. Now, 
community when you're building it intentionally is very very hard it's like a lot of it's mm -hmm. it's hard work it takes a lot of resources a lot of your time just like any other work it, it is work so if you're just gonna think that you're just gonna freestyle your way out well this is my story i tried to do it in a freestyle way and i wasn't making a lot of money i was barely making any and I was spending all my time and then I started facing some health issues because I was overworking myself, yeah. over -engineer, like injuring myself uh, without having some form of a system or a process or a plan to move forward. So once I started, like, you have to experiment. You cannot not know what to do before you do it. So right. you have to at least experiment and try and see what works best for you. And then you start seeing better opportunities and you start seeing better options on how you go or how you split your time and attention and skills. So just like any other, any other work, you have a lot of skills to build in community. You have to be a great facilitator, also a mm -hmm. great leader. You have to be resourceful, resourceful um, intensive. You have to learn and understand your customer or community member's journey. You have to create some form of transformation. Like if people want to go with you in this community, where do you want to lead them to? Who are they before they join and who are they after they join? All of those questions, I never thought about them before I, I started building this intentionally. I was just like, I want to teach. I was just like, right. I want to give value. Um, and now at least I know how I can make a good community and how I can break one and how can I, I can make a bad one. And the next question for me was, how can I do this but still enjoy doing it mm -hmm. with the resources and the time that I have? And uh, the, the answer to that is I don't want to have a lot of members in my community, only a handful few. I don't want to do a lot of events with guest speakers only once in a while. I don't mm -hmm. want to um, do every other day. Like, I don't want to do every week a podcast or a live or twice a week. That's a lot of bandwidth on my end. I just mm -hmm. want to do it every other time. Once you start having those kind of questions and you start creating some form of a time bound and a time frame, everything gets easier and you actually start enjoying what you're building in a very intentional way. And the truth is you actually are building your personal brand by taking these steps to experiment and to learn what your process is. It's just as much about the way that you do things and the way um, your bandwidth and your sustainability and all of that um, speaks so much to your personal brand too. You can't build a community like everyone else is going to build a community because it's not going to be authentic yeah. to you and it's not going to be sustainable. So what are you going to have left to give? So that totally makes a lot of sense. And that experience, you're going to have to be okay with trying and changing and being open about that probably with your community too and saying, I tried this, don't love it. It's not for me, but this is, you know, we're building a community together. So you're being honest and transparent. You're being true to yourself and authentic in yourself in that process and uh, you also if you're doing this as a business if you're like at some point if you just run a community as a hobby you're gonna burn out you're gonna burn out yeah a hundred percent it happens it always happens um because we all have we all want to make money we all want to achieve some form of a goal and you might say money is not important when you're building a community First of all, that's wrong. Money is always important. It's like money doesn't buy happiness. Oh, really? Watch me. Give me a million dollars and you will see how happy I am. So, <laughs> that's true. You're so right. That, that's it's, one it's, a re it's a resource like anything else. We spend our time. We spend our energy. We spend, you know, giving this value to other people. Money is just another form of that energy that's being transacted. I mean, yes. why wouldn't you want more of that? Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. And it's not the problem with the money that makes corrupt people. It's corrupt people that takes money and make it more corrupt. Yep. It so, just magnifies it. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> I like that word. Ma magnifies it. Okay. Um, the other part is community type of money making activities is a little bit untraditional. It's like you won't necessarily learn or find it in a book or or right. some other for it. Like, it's a very new thing. Like community business models is a new thing, is a trendy thing. Um, uh -huh. So maybe a good resource to learn about pricing uh, a community membership model is a book by a good friend of a good friend of mine and a great author. His name is Ron Baker or Ron C. Baker, and his book is called Value Implementing Value Based Pricing. 
So again, implementing yeah. value-based pricing by Ron Baker. He teaches pretty much everything you would possibly need to learn about um, the membership pricing model and the value-based pricing model. And he has multiple books on the topic, not just one. You were mentioning, you know, the monetization aspect. You've been covering that a lot recently. And you don't have to talk, necessarily talk about community. We can branch out from necessarily just the community aspect. I wanted to start there because that's really kind of how I got to know you. Um, but now you've really moved from just, you know, the branding and bringing together these branding experts, but then starting to talk about creatives and their personal branding. So you're not just talking about personal branding. You're talking about personal branding and monetization, which a lot of people kind of talk about, but they also kind of skirt around it because they're like, oh, is this authentic? Is this not authentic? I'd love for you to share kind of your thoughts on, you know, monetizing a personal brand and you have a cohort right now specifically on that. So I want to hear your thoughts on kind of where you came to that or where you've been seeing some issues in monetizing a personal brand. Yeah, well, one of my cohort customers, they actually do want to do something similar. They want to market and sell personal branding as a service. And mm -hmm. one of the problems and the issues that they face is that, the market needs are this and their purpose and their the thing that fulfills them is that and mm -hmm. there's a disconnection between the two yeah. like what they want to do the thing that really makes them happy and wake up every day isn't necessarily what people are willing to pay for so okay. that's the biggest biggest issue with personal branding is how can you bridge the gap between the two how can you do what you really enjoy doing that the market also um, pays well for it because at least if you're just like me, you want to be uh, you want to be free, you want to be independent, that you want to make have a lot of money. So the way I would do that, or the way I'm doing that with my own personal brand is again, what is my ikigai here? So what is ikigai? Let's just start with that. Ikigai is four questions. I think I can only remember three. Let's try my. Let's. I'm gonna try my best. You know what here. we're gonna do? We're going to add that in the, um, we have a companion notion doc for all the. Four questions to really understand and know your Ikigai. So question number one, what are you good at? What's your skill? Question number two, what do you want to be paid for? The marketplace, the impact that you want to get to the world. So right. answering these four questions, like in a table, like four columns, and then just brainstorm as many ideas as you want, and then the beauty of this is once you do that, you start connecting the dots and you start finding something that you are good at, that you actually enjoy doing, that you're passionate about, that you might just be, be paid for that, that actually the world needs. That's your goal with the Ikigai. So for me, um, when I was trying to monetize my personal brand, I was like, okay, how can I do all four of them? At least three out of four. If mm -hmm. three out of four, cool. Anything beyond that, no. So... For me, my Ikigai was like four elements, a lifestyle of me doing whatever the hell I want. So like travel and stuff like that. So something I'm mm -hmm. passionate about. So that's one, the independence, the travel, the lifestyle. Number two is personal branding. I wanted to build a personal brand. Like I have a story on this I'm going to share in a second. Number three is community building. Number four is education. So mm -hmm. the way the Ikigai would look like in this scenario is that I can teach my uh, personal branding knowledge. Mm -hmm. I can also get paid to teach and eventually I can travel to teach. Right. I can go to the places that I want to go, the lifestyle that I want to have while still making money. So that was kind of my ikigai and how I'm doing this journey of monetiz monetizing my own personal brand. And it's been, it's been going great. I'm doing it one piece at a time. So right now I'm doing a cohort version of it, which is an online version, a group of people. I teach them how to close a $3,000 offer. For now, that's the cohort model. Mm -hmm. It might change. But I teach them, I show them my processes, and I also hold them accountable for it. We, we meet every week, and I get paid for it. And I'm also doing something that they enjoy, which is teaching. So that's, that's a core cool example. Now, as far as what personal branding is or why I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. um, personal branding might mean a lot of things to a lot of people. Just like branding might mean a lot of things to a lot of people. This is the irony of this industry. The mm -hmm. definitions are not like, they are not legalized. They are not like standard. Right. But hey, I'm a misfit and I like when things are challenged and things are not following the norms. So 
personal branding and why does that make sense for me? Why is that my ikigai? Because you might just listen to this audio or this uh, podcast and you might like, oh, that's cool. Let me duplicate what Emin is doing. Let mm -hmm. me go to personal branding and build a community and I will make a lot of money. No. The whole Ikigai concept is for you to find what you actually care about, not what I care about. This is my story, not yours. You have to learn to create your own story. It might inspire you. You might fix something in personal branding, but even if you do personal branding, we're not going to be doing it the same way. So personal branding, I did the market research and I was seeing some of the outcomes of what that means for some people. Some people think personal branding is fame. So it's like Gary V level, um, yeah. NBA star level, celebrity level, fame. Followers, fame, people shooting out and buying everything that you do. That's one okay. format. Another format is personal freedom to do whatever you want, to travel mm -hmm. wherever you want, to make as much money as you can, which is maybe 100K or more a year. That's kind of the research numbers. Another format of personal branding is books, authors, like, oh, you're a published, you're a best-selling author, therefore you're a great personal brand. That's another mm -hmm. trend. And the right. fourth one that really connects with me is actually community building. Like right. personal communities that are ran by personal brands. Like right. Chris Doe, the future. Um, Valuetainment, Patrick, Beth, David. Um, Everyday Innovation, Jordan. Uh, Jordan Divetja. So you get the idea. You know the community because of its founder, because of its personal brand. Tesla, Elon Musk. Steve Jobs, Apple. Without Steve Jobs, there would be no Apple. So that's, that's kind of the idea there. And that's the path I'm going with. Like I am teaching and I am building a community that is personal brand focused. While if you do the same thing, maybe personal branding would be a whole different thing for you. So I just wanted to share that out there. So, okay. So in your community now, like as you've moved into the personal branding, are a lot of people also wanting to work in that space in their own way? And, or are they just building their personal brand in maybe a similar way by building community? I'm just curious as to who's kind of coming into your aura. So the, the, the customer that we were talking about earlier is a person mm -hmm. who wants to sell personal branding for other companies. Like right. they want to sell it as a, like, Let's just say you're a company brand and you're a founder um, and you're trying to sell something, but you don't have a personal brand. You're non-existent. Right. I will be there. I will show up. I will teach you how to do it so that you can build that strong personal brand for yourself. That's, oh, yeah. And the that's people the trust the founder versus the, the product brand then. Yes. Um, the way I want to do it is a little bit different. I want to build a personal brand where you know me and you only know me as a person who's a community person. Like mm -hmm. My personal brand is the community vibe, is the person who connects you with other people. Um, mm -hmm. And hence that first challenge that I mentioned early on is me being worldwide. Um, the, what was the word? Word citizen. Here we go. Yeah. Um, so almost like a community citizen, not just a word citizen. Anyways, I'm just rambling around. No, I mean, no, that totally makes a whole lot of sense. And kind of returning back to, you were talking about how you have built this community of misfits. So let's say there's one connector between everyone. So maybe some people are working on a personal brand, um, like their personal brand personally. Some people are wanting to work on other people's personal brands while working on their own. You may have a mix of people, but they're all misfits. So I want to know, like, what is a misfit to you? Because I feel like we love misfits and I want to kind of speak to this group in that what is what is a misfit to you okay good question i am a misfit because i feel like i don't belong to a specific place because whatever mm -hmm. i tried whatever i did i never felt like i fit in i never felt like oh these people are my people i never felt like this thing that i'm studying is the thing that i want to do as a job or i never felt like in my own home and this is a personal story but for so many years I had a lot of conflict with my mother I never mm. felt like I fit I never felt like I was actually her son like I yeah. never felt like I am having the same blood that she has I felt like a completely disconnected person that wherever I go no one seems to understand me 
wherever I go, wherever I try, seems like it's always a failure. Seems like I never can settle in in one specific mm. way. Like I try software engineering, doesn't work. I try design, doesn't work. I try this niche, doesn't work. I try learning that. I tried so many things. So misfits, that's the energy that you should have when you think about the word misfit. But you might say, oh, that's super negative. That's super pessimistic. That's sad. Well, there is no meaning to life without death. There is no meaning to happiness without sadness. So if there is no such thing as a low moment or a sad moment or something negative, then the other side of it wouldn't make so much sense. So a misfit isn't just a person who doesn't fit in. It's also a person who creates their own home out from scratch. Mm -hmm. It's the person who creates opportunities for him without letting other people create that. It's a mm -hmm. person who achieves whatever he desires and whatever he wants to achieve. No bounds, no control. It's also a person who is not being told what to do. You cannot be a boss or a bossy over a misfit because they will just right. leave you. A misfit is also those kind of rare talents that you find in companies that usually just join for a very short period of time, but change the whole game of the company. They change the whole, like they create a different vibe. Misfits is also a person who's a leader by default. A misfit cannot really, he's not really good at following other people, but he's mm -hmm. really good at setting example for other people. So those are the two coins of a misfit. Hopefully now you have a clear understanding of who that is in your life. That's perfect. And you actually answered my question of like, what do you feel like is the role of misfits? And it really is to be that catalyst for change. And I think in a lot of ways, I'm sure you can agree in like personal branding, the things that sometimes we feel like our shadows or our, the, the parts that we want to hide, our weaknesses, quote unquote, uh, often are like the the flip side of the coin to a strength that, that we have. And it's, you know, for misfits, a lot of times it's like, having to create your own systems because your school system failed you, right? Or your work system failed you. Um, it's creating your own communities because you didn't feel accepted by that. It's creating other types of solutions for people because you've been on the receiving end. You haven't been the favored one for that particular system, that society, um, whatever that might be. So it's amazing that you've been creating this, um, this space for that. And how, what should a misfit do in their personal branding? How can they like play that up, that they are a little bit different, they're a little bit rebellious. How would you advise somebody who is a misfit to lean into that? Very good question. The simplest form of an answer to this is do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. don't, don't wait for me to tell you what to do or to give you a piece of advice. Go seek out what you think is good for you what you like opportunities that you think are best for you. The thing that you might be a little bit scared of, but you also know that that's also the thing that you really enjoy doing, or that's maybe the better version of yourself and how you envision that in the future. Go do that. Explore. Being a misfit is having the permission to explore new territories. Like being a misfit is also having no rules. Therefore, you create the roles. It's your life, it's your game, and you do whatever you wish to do. That's really the only answer I can give. The way I've done it for myself is I cared enough to share what I learn with other people because mm -hmm. it just fuels me to see other people succeed because of who they are, not despite who they are. So me sharing and helping them achieve that makes me very happy and very fulfilled. So that's how I'm growing my own misfit personal brand, by teaching, by sharing, by simply being who I am in real life without no filters, whatever that is. For me, it might be funny sometimes. I might be very direct and rude for some people. I might be very, very kind very wise like i'm not i don't sound like my age that kind of vibe that's just who i am you might not want to copy that but a good first step is figure out who you are that might take a while that might 
take some time of experimentation, but at least having the intention to just explore and deciding that, first of all, I don't know who I am. I've been existing for so many years now, and I don't even have a good understanding of who I am, what's my personality like, what do I like, what, do I, don't, what I don't like. Just a first step to acknowledge the fact that you don't know who you are, that you're willing to take the risk to learn that and to know that and to know your pitfalls and your strengths and your weaknesses. And also to take a bet on yourself to actually work on those weaknesses, to be loud about it, to be vulnerable about it, to share it to the world or not. It's your decision. But it takes a lot of work to just do that, to just know yourself. Once you do that, trust me, anything that comes after that is going to be way easier. Because once you know yourself, you have a filtering system, you have a decision-making system. Therefore, whatever hard or easy decision that comes to your way, it's just easier to either make it or, or not. Because you know who you are and you know who you're not. So start there. Know who you are. You create your own rules. And that's the misfit way. Okay. Well, that was incredible. I love that. Thank you so much for that. I mean, you just, I mean, everything just wrapped up in a bow. You were incredible. I want to ask you um, a couple of things just to kind of round, round it out, round out our chat and continue the conversation going in other spaces and have people explore their icky guys. Well, I'm so excited to see like what people are sharing as well and what they've kind of figured out. So with that being said, I mean, I, I'm posting this, I have all these things that are called everyday innovation. This is another thing that has no uh, no definition, um, no actual true definition. It comes in a lot of different ways. It also depends on the context in which you're speaking. So what I love to ask, because I love hearing different people's interpretations of it, um, is what does everyday innovation mean to you? Or how does it show up for you? For some reason, I was expecting this question. Like, uh... I was like, okay, this is an innovation podcast. There's definitely a tech question. It's gonna gonna happen at some point. Okay, so here's what everyday innovation means to me. Um, and I can share a story that relates to this in a second. But yesterday I went on a run. So yeah. I went for like a 40 minutes run and I had one goal in mind, like through the whole day. It wasn't the run. It was actually to do 100 push-ups. Why yeah. is that? Like out of the blue, why should I even want to make a hundred push-ups? Because I watched a video from from Goggins, the crazy run runner who did like the crazy running challenge, and he trains he trains uh, people in the gym. And one of the people one of the people that he trained recently shared this story that he asked him to do like a hundred pull-ups when he never done any pull-ups before. What does that do? It challenges your mind and your body. Like your body will tell you, oh, oh sorry, your mind will tell you like stop in like. 20 pull-ups or 20 push-ups or less. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's your limitation. That's what your mind tells you. It, it plays games with you. But once you overcome that threshold and you push yourself a little bit harder, your body just adapts and you can do way more than you think. So that's, that's like blown my mind and I wanted to do a, a similar version to that in the push-ups. And they did 100 push-ups uh, push in that day yesterday. Uh, awesome. And how does that connect with everyday innovation? So the fun part of this is that innovation doesn't always have to mean AI or tech. No, innovation not at all. could simply be like a new frame of thinking or like a mm -hmm. a way to simplify your day to day or your everyday life. So yeah. for me it was how can I do that? How can I overcome my limitations? and create some form of a process or a system to do that every day. So the way I would do that is I simply just push myself out of my boundaries, out of my comfort zone. And that's where the Goggin story came into place. So like, ooh, 100 push-ups where I don't even know how to do 10. That sounds interesting. Do, you, do I think I can do it? Do I think I can do it every day? Maybe not, but I at least I can do it today. So I did it. Another, another day I, I did like a crazy hike with like six hours of uphill with my bike. 
Trust me, I only knew that I could do like an hour or two. But I innovated. I created some form of telling myself like, I can do this. Mm -hmm. And the only way I know that I can do this is if I actually finish it. So that was a very small mindset or thinking that I can see it as innovation. Another way is in business, um, which is a trendy topic, which is AI. Like artificial intelligence is definitely the future to go with tech. The way I'm using that or the way I think about that is it's not just about you're going to be replaced by a person who uses AI if you don't use, this, use it first. It's almost like AI is a tool. It's an innovative tool that helps us, simplifies our lives and assists us in different kind of ways. So what if I can take advantage of that? And how can I take an advantage in that every day? So chat, GPT, stuff like that. I was like, okay, let me try it. I'm a late adopter. I don't, I didn't like the idea at first, but I found mm -hmm. myself, ooh, I need to write about something and I need a new name for this product. Ooh, I need to generate um, as like a market research persona to this thing. And then now I have to do it manually again, too much work. Is there a system or a process that could save me time? So the way I th thought about AI is simple. If this can help me save time while doing the things that I usually do, then I should do it. So I did, and I learned so much, and AI is almost now part of my day-to-day -day innovations. That's what I think when I think about the name. I mean, I love that. And you kind of also retied back in what we talked about in the beginning when you were saying that you've been focusing and learning more about everything personal, right? Your um, personal finance, your um, your personal fitness, everything that's going into that. What you're doing is you're continually to have personal development and you're creating systems to put in place so that you can have this systemic development in your business with using AI, you, um, utilizing these new frameworks that you're thinking about and using a physical space to test out something to get over the mental hump. I mean, this is all innovation. It's all the everyday innovation of Amin. And that's what's so cool is you can really take the personal brand of Amin and see where that fits into all the things that you're doing. And that's probably what's going to happen with AI too. A lot of us, I think, in, in different ways had resistance to it. And it's overwhelming. Like, where do I even jump into it? You jump in where you meet it, you know, where you see a need for it, where you, um, you feel you resonate with it. Like some people are never going to get into the AI art space. Some people are never going to get into uh, writing with chat GPT, but there may be something in there that's like, oh, huh, this kind of fits in with my system or my process or my personality. This can help me. So yeah. why not? Then the last kind of thing I want to touch on, just because I want this to be more of an ongoing conversation. Is there a question that you have um, for listeners right now? Something that you would, you're curious to get to know about them? Yeah. Oh, very good one. So since we're talking about personal branding and authenticity, my question is this for you, listener. Who are you and why should we care? Mm. That's it. If you can answer that, if you can tell me who you are and why should I care, I would personally reach out to you um, and we might do something fun together or meet up or something. So just let me know. Who are you and why should we care? I love that. Well, now we get to know a little bit more about you and I definitely care about you. You're amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much Thank for you. being on here. This was super, super helpful. I mean, where's the best, where are the best places to find you if someone's just listening to this right now, not jumping into show notes, they want to go direct right now. <laughs> oh man. Okay. So I, I don't think you can pronounce my name. So just type my name in Google and the first link that shows up, that's where you can find me. I'm everywhere. LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter. It's my name, at Amin Hammo. Um, you can type it out and you will find me there. And if you need any help with my with personal branding, just reach out and DM me the word personal brand and I can give you some free resources. And I might just share some with Jordan so that you can find some of them in the um, Notion comments. I do want to yes. ask one thing um, from the listeners. Like One of them is who are you and why should they care? And also if this is like a useful, valuable podcast for you, if you learn something, share with us your ikigai. Like, actually do the exercise and tag us. Like, tag me on Twitter or on LinkedIn, whatever. 
um, share, share with me something that makes you super unique, which is your Ikigai, and I will more, be more than gladly happy to reshare it with my own audience. Look at you being a connector with, with all of the misfits, right? All the, all the creators. I love that. Thank you so much, Amin. As, as always, it was a pleasure speaking with you. And I look forward to hearing from all of you what your Ikigai is, um, what you took away from this. Please DM us anytime. We're very friendly. <laughs> Thank you, Amin. You're welcome. Thank you, Jordan. And I will see you all in traffic.